Underneath this jungle of undergrowth lies nearly 2,000 years of English history. The council wants to create a park here and a local chap wants to build a hotel over there. Now, we know that there's a Roman fort over there somewhere because it's already been excavated, but there should be a medieval castle here and maybe even a Jacobean or a Tudor mansion as well. More than that, we don't know, but in just three days, we will. This is Malton in North Yorkshire. It's a quiet little market town between Old Malton and Norton, on the banks of the River Derwent. The dark green jutting into the town is our site, and it's going to be a big challenge. Not only are we looking for two buildings from different periods, but the site is completely overgrown with nettles and trees. There's ten acres of this stuff, and it's very thick. So, we're just going to have to follow in the nettle cutter's footsteps. Which is just what geophysics have started doing. While Stuart takes charge of the nettle cutting strategy. Behind this beech tree, Mick, Phil and Carenza are busy too. They've found a clue to the medieval castle. They're standing on a large mound which suggests there may be rubble from a building underneath. Mick wants to put a trench into it here. We'd put a trench across this bank and ditch down there. But Phil's not happy. I mean, we've obviously got a hell of a slope going down there, but... I don't know. I'm bothered by the roots. You're worried about the tree roots There's going a, across. You know, yeah. what well, I, we're on a mound here. It goes round there. Can we start off here, I, Phil? I, and if we I, get problems, I can't see go. why. If that is the Hang same on, if slope, you're, if you're going to go, you have to give me a bit of notice. <laughs> what? Oh, uh, I was going to say, don't run off, Mick. <laughs> <laughs> Look, if I hack my way yeah, through I, here, I can see what you mean. He's dropping away. It's going to nettles, go. It's it? going to go down here. Yeah. And it certainly, by the time you get, see, I'm going right the way down. Yeah. And it looks to me as though this is the same slope coming round here. Well, that, and we, I mean, we got no roots here. But surely, if we, we, if it is a mound, we need to have a section across two bits of it. Can we, can we start a trench here? If we really hit problems with it, we may have to abandon it. By, by well, that time, the nettles here will be cleared. The other and thing, then we can move to there. The other thing, look, Phil. All right. If you uh, come back over here where we were, look. Yeah. Is that this? The bit you're on about is the top bit of here. Yeah. I and mean, it is actually carrying on down, that far down that you, you're looking at the rooftops of houses. And if you're going to have an edge of a castle, while that might be part of the internal range, which is much more likely to be the edge of it, isn't it, with a drop like that and the river at the bottom as well. Sounds like I'm being outvoted, doesn't it? I mean, this, this whole lot is a scheduled ancient monument, isn't it? What, is, what does that actually mean, John? Well, the schedule is actually a kind of list which was, is compiled and maintained by the Secretary of State for National Heritage, right. which identifies sites which deserve statutory and special protection. English Heritage were interested in the site and actually support the Time Team's investigations. Yeah. And in fact, on our advice, the Secretary of State actually granted consent, but it has specific terms and conditions. You're allowed five trenches here, which right. will cover no more than 200 square metres right. to try to locate yeah. the castle yeah. and the Jacobean mansion. And we've only got consent to dig in this half of the site because English Heritage don't want us disturbing the Roman fort part of which is in the other half. I just hope the castle's in our bit. There's a good sign it may be. Trench 1 is under these trees, and just nearby, these look like old walls. 
Could they be the walls of our castle? You can't get at them from the site, so Carenza and Beric Morley, our historical buildings expert, are attacking from the street. It looks like it might be open in there. Meanwhile, Stuart's almost off the map at the other end of the site. Stuart? Why are you poking around the Roman fort? Not the fort's miles away from where everyone else is looking for the medieval castle, and we can't dig here anyway. What's he up to? I think one of the things we've got to consider on this site is wh why was there a castle here in the medieval period? Why was it placed here? And I'm looking to see if there's any evidence in, in, in these slopes. This is the, the line of the Roman fort. You see, it's massive. If you came here in the 12th century, and this was already here, big defences, wouldn't you use it rather than crazy not to, really, That's right. You, yeah. And I think there's a, a strong possibility that this outline of the Roman fort that was here would have been used as a bailey for a Mott and Bailey castle in the first instance. Remind me about what a Mott and Bailey is. A, a Mott is a, it's a mound on top of which you put a timber palisade and a, and a timber tower at first. It's just a retreat. And the Bailey is the surround? That's right. It's like a key ring around it to, to help protect it. It's where you keep your horses and, and, and soldiers and so on. It's a fairly temporary type of thing until the Norman lords um, feel a bit more secure. And then when they feel more secure, they, they want to build a stone castle. That's what happens. So there's a possibility there's more than one castle on the site, a timber one and a stone one. And we're, we're all chasing the stone one over there, intending to forget that there might be a temporary castle here in the first place, just while the lords and the barons get themselves established and control this crossing. Back at the mound, the good news is that Phil's worries about the roots are clearly unfounded. Our first trench is already huge. And it's produced what look like two small ditches, although they are in fact both sides of a much larger one. But the bad news from our point of view is that the few bits of pottery they've found are all Roman, so it may not be part of the castle. I'll let you go first. The okay. walls in Bridget Lovett's garden look a better bet. So you'd be confident this is medieval? I what am, yes. sort of medieval date? <laughs> it could be any date, fairly late on. There's a funny bit in the corner where it's cut away. I'm not sure it is cut away. I think this is a little shallow buttress. Would that help you date it at all? Well, it certainly would, because these shallow buttresses tend to be early. What sort of date would that be then? Well, that would be the latter part of the 12th century and on just into the 13th. Bingo, our castle walls. Behind them, back on the site, our first trench is still looking Roman. So Phil wants to put in another, just where he first suggested this morning. He's got geophysics on his side too. Their results suggest there's a wall there. So Mick's having a wander around, but because of his injury, he's doing it in comfort, while Nick and a camcorder do the legwork. They're looking at trench one. OK, go round the other way, Nick, round, right round to your left, and then bring us across to this other earthwork. This is more or less running along the line of that breaker slope yeah. anyway, and then it turns. turns right. Oh, there's the corner. And there's yeah, the right. corner, which is just down here, and we're then looking back along this earthwork here. Right for there, Nick, that's great. For ease of slope, for ease of tr access, that a trench through there is just going to be so much easier. But the, pro the problem, Phil, is that I'm not sure this is the same earthwork as this one round the front. Well, it, sure as he it sure as hell looked like it to me. I've well, <laughs> been and seen it, Mick. I've walked up and down well, it. I, I, I've driven <laughs> around it in the creek, right? <laughs> and I, I wonder whether this isn't a garden earthwork. Yeah. Like a terrace that's right. going well, It looks back. that way to me. Yeah. It looks like a terrace actually yeah. coming around. Yeah, and it turns a right angle at the end. So are you saying that that's, that one there is originally a defensive bank which is being incorporated into the gardens? I think that's more likely. Nah, well, that's fair enough. Whereas this one here is purely for garden, pure garden. gardens. Right. And so therefore, the... if we dig a trench across this, yeah. we're not going to get the story, are we? Of the... No, that's true. It could be the wrong place, if you're yeah. right. But yeah. it might also be the same feature that actually runs round both sides. Yeah. With the might of English heritage on his side, okay. Phil's view exactly prevailed. They're going to extend Trench 1 further up into the mound and put in the new trench, still desperately seeking medieval. Come this way then, if you wouldn't mind. 
But the new trench is only a few yards away from Trench 1, which appears to be Roman. And everyone now agrees the mound is probably a much later garden feature. It all sounds like a long shot to me, but then what do I know? Looks like medieval to me, you make nothing to you? Yeah, it's nice bit of medieval. But is it in, is it in Stone Spider or is it uh, in the film at all? Oh, it's just in the, in the top. But I mean, when I compare with what we got over here to what we had in that other trench, that was all Roman. Yeah. But well, there wasn't a sniff of this stuff at all. Yeah. So we're getting fines and from the right period. That'll please everyone, not least the local council. Jill, why are you so interested in what's under the ground here? Basically, what we're trying to do is create a community park, drawing on the archaeology of the area, drawing of the history of what is underneath mm. Moulton, Norton and Old Moulton. Hang on, where are we now? We're stood in Orchard Field now, Tony, which is just here. It's yeah. the site of the Roman fort. Oh, so that's the, the fort just over there? That's right. This is the old Roman, yeah. Roman, Roman fort. And where's our dig? The dig's taking part in these grounds, which are at the back of the lodge, which is just straight in front of us down there. Yeah. And this community park? It's a series of walkways which is going to link the three communities together. Um, cycleways, scented nature trails, that sort of thing. By the end of the day, most of the nettles are down and both trenches are well established, though with mixed fortunes. Trench 1, resolutely Roman. Trench 2, reassuringly medieval. <laughs> well, Beric and I got really excited about yeah, this. This is great. This is a piece of 13th century pottery that's from what's called an aquamineal, which is a water pot. There's the, the seating of the lid and the, and the knob, but up against the knob from each side was an animal made up of pottery like this and it's a sort of hideous frog-like thing and you had put it in pride of place in the middle of your table and, and poured your water from it mm. and it's the sort of thing you'd have had in a high status building like a big castle even though it's just been found in the rubble it, it's, it's, like it's a great great yeah. thing for to lead us on now oh, isn't yeah. it yeah. well end of day one we've got Roman we've got medieval we've got our mystery ditch and we're still waiting on more geophys results. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So hopefully tomorrow there'll be more finds. I think we're all pretty certain of that, aren't we? You bet. <laughs> and hopefully we'll find the Jacobean house. We hope so. See you yeah. after the break. <laughs> Stuart's on the scent of the Jacobean mansion and he's off to survey the area where he thinks it's likely to be. It's still quite handsome, even despite the amount of erosion it's got, but it must have been wonderful at one time. Yeah, well, the, the, these are the and this is one of the clues to its location, a 17th century lodge that was probably the original gatehouse to the mansion. The extension would have been added in Victorian times. These days, it's owned by local businessman Norris Binner, who wants to turn it into a hotel. He's collared Berwick to tell him where he thinks we should be looking. Yeah, well, you dig it over there, Berwick. My own gut feeling is that the house is down in this part. What's your Well, I think on? you're probably going to turn out to be right. It's likely to be like most Jacobean houses, symmetrical with its facade. And I've managed to find another one that's exactly the same. And as you can see, it's got nine squares. Those around the outside are gardens, but if you come in from the, through that lodge house, there's a big courtyard in that square, and behind it is the house, straight ahead of you. And that, I guess, on a smaller scale than this one, is the sort of thing you've got here. If Berwick and Norris are right, then the mansion should be in this area here, about 60 feet below the lodge, directly symmetrical with it. Which was exactly Stuart's thinking and he's already plotted out the possible size and shape of the building. While Geophys are still hunting the castle in the most recently denettled area just beyond. And Carenza and I take to the air to try and put the castle into the context of medieval Malton. Yes, if we could just head down straight ahead a little bit off... We're looking for the medieval borough boundary and the old marketplace. But because it's market day, the first thing we see is the modern one. That's the present marketplace with the church in it. And in fact, the medieval borough boundary curved round the back of that. So where you can see all those cars parked and the houses with the white facades, the curving line that comes right round, you can see that. 
that street curves right round, crosses the main road, goes round the back there, forms this lovely curving sort of enclosure around the medieval town. We could also see that for the castle to overlook both the River Derwent and the town, it must have been in our half of the site. Good news. The old market was harder to spot from up here, but down below, Mix discovered it on foot, so to speak. This is the old marketplace. Yeah. The well, original. I mean, the, the whole of this big square was originally the market, yeah, wasn't yeah, it? Yeah, I've seen that on the maps. Yeah, it's, and, and then around here you can see the filled in arches look. Yes, We're, when it was originally open underneath for the traders. And then we've had the, the marketing wet weather under there. Yeah. But you can see the full width here. Look, there's the other side. We've been at the one end, and the whole thing's going off down right. there. Give it some armor. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> it's OK for you, mate. <laughs> peaceful now with the market on Saturday <laughs> as, as we turn into Finkel Street. Totally different from what it must have been in the Middle Ages, mind yeah, you. Yeah, yeah, I bet. You know, the more documents I look at, the yeah. more you realise what a hell of a life they led. Yeah. Uh, I mean, hardly any of the Veskies who built the castle managed to die in their beds. Oh, right. You know, crossbow <laughs> bolts and javelins through the head. Oh, good Lord. You know, meeting yeah. a sorry sticky end at Bannockburn. Yeah. You've also got the, 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 uh, the double destruction of the castle yeah. that took place first at the hands of uh, David of Scotland uh, in 1138. Then you've got the, the much better documented one by King John in about 1214, yeah. where we've actually got the cost of slighting the castle when they spent 11 pound, two shillings and eight pence in employing nine men yeah. uh, to tear down the castle. Yeah. But they apparently used local fishermen. Well, what were these chaps doing, undermining the walls or something? Presumably, or... Yeah. and also setting uh, fires in order to destroy the, 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 you know, the timber structure of the yeah, castle as well. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Violent times indeed. Well, that's right, yes. It's uh, difficult to imagine now, isn't it? Yeah. Phil's gone to see an instrument of that violence actually in production. This is what we're trying to make then, a sort of early medieval sword, is very, it? Very, very late Norman to early medieval. And it's just simple, simple blade with a cross guard and a, and a round pommel. That's right, yeah. Vicious weapon. Absolutely. <laughs> you pump the bellows slowly and evenly. It's got a counterweight in the bottom. You give it time to sink down, that pumps the air through evenly. Oh, I see. The situation we're at at the moment, Maurice, is that we've, from the work we've done on the gardens and the buildings, we've identified really that the big Jacobean residence should have been somewhere in this area here. One of the big problems we've got, if I can just draw it out for you, it'd be easier. We've got the We've got the lodge, which is the gatehouse there, the, the roads out the front. Down the back here, we've got a whole series of, of garden terraces. Mm. And the, the archaeology and the architecture suggests to, to, to myself and Berwick that we have a house sitting there, which is in this area here. Right. But the problem is it, it might be square with a courtyard in the middle, or it might be with a frontage there and two wings, in which case it might be open courtyard at the back and where we put a trench in here is going to be very difficult so we might put a trench in and hit the courtyard and not hit the building so at the moment I've got no geophysics here at the moment and it's, it's a right sort of mess in there with nettles I'd feel happier if we could get rid of some of these nettles and, and get some geophysics in before yeah. I, I stick my neck out and put a trench in how do you feel about me asking that couldn't we sort of take a chance now with the measurements we've got and dig the channel out now I think taking a chance is the wrong, wrong approach for mm. the sake of uh, half an hour clearing the nettles mm. off and another mm. hour or two getting geophysics results. Yeah, I think mm. we must go yeah. with the geophysics first, definitely, yeah. and then we actually pinpoint the trench. Because Wouldn't... in fact, we haven't got many trenches mm. left and we've got to make every, every trench count here. That's right. Yep. Shall we get the lads in and, yep. and get, Let's get that pit strip in? Yep. No wonder Norris looks worried. This is his garden we're uprooting. Are you sure about them taking those roses out down there? You're not bothered about it? No, they're all. Let's get it cleared out and let's get on with the job and find yeah. it out. Well, at least you get your garden done for note, don't you? Well, we do, yes. <laughs> True Yorkshire, really. Back at the arms factory, Barry's taken over from Phil and is progressing fast. Well, at least he's got it square now. Phil's gone back to have a look at the trenches. 
The second trench, which yesterday gave us the aquamanil, the jug with frogs on it, continues to produce fascinating objects. And Hi. got some finds. Go on, have, we've yes. got finds. What you got? Well, I've got some window glass. Oh, just look at that. That's isn't that pretty? Isn't that delicate? It's very delicate. It is, isn't it? And to go with it, a piece of the lead. lead. Oh. See the grooves where the, the glass fits in? Yes, I do, yes, yeah. Now, could these be either from our Jacobean mansion or from the medieval castle, do you think? I don't think they're from the medieval castle. Um, all the finds that we're getting out of here are pretty consistently 16th century. Yeah. So, I mean, they're good 1500 dates. I mean, it, it's a nice assemblage, beautiful. So we are getting somewhere. Brilliant, oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, not yeah, a problem. No problem. Anything else? Oh, oh what? <laughs> <laughs> That's what he's yeah, Brilliant timing. One, one, yeah. uh, what, what's that? It's um, lead, fishing weight by Take the looks of thing. things. Yeah. Oh, and these are... Little grooves little in it. Grooves it. And I do oh, see you probably the find there's a little well. hole in the top there, is it? And this yeah. that, this would be 15th, 16th century? Yeah. Gotta be, yeah. yeah. I like that. But nice as finds like this are, I'm a bit worried. Yesterday, this trench was producing medieval pottery. Now it's all later stuff, which doesn't bode well for finding the castle. 2.45 day two, and Mick and Carenza are comparing notes from their expeditions this morning, with the aid of Sue and her computer graphics. Can the layout of Malton give any clues? And the other one comes straight down That's it through the there, middle, across. straight down, straight through and across the river. And you can see then the castle's on the hill, dominating the, the town, the road crossing, and the river crossing over there. Mm. there. That's going oh, off to Scarborough, right. that's going yeah. to York. And this is the earliest centre, that's that square block. And there's that market there. area possible in there. Yeah. Um, and there, of course, that's, that's the present market. You can see all the little white market. roofs yeah. of the awnings of the stores. And you stores. can see me, look, there in my wheelchair. Oh, is that there, where you were? Yeah, oh. looking up at you enviously. <laughs> As a result of that conflab, Mick and Carenza decide to get the digger into action again and put in another trench. The third of our five. The aim is to find the castle wall overlooking the old town. With the wall Berwick and Carenza found on day one, they would then have two sides of the perimeter and a good idea of what the castle might have looked like. But once again, there are a few trees to negotiate. Meanwhile, Phil's turned his attentions to Trench 1, the one with the Roman ditch. Yesterday's decision to extend it out of the trees into the mound seems to have paid off. Mick the Dig has found a wall. You've got this nice rubble coming off and it's coming onto a nice clean surface there. Yeah, that's exactly right. It's got to be the castle, isn't it? No, I don't know. Come what the... on, <laughs> come on. Mate. Look, I mean, you've got all this, all this muck on the top of it. This has got to be a substantial building if it's got mortar floors. I reckon it's got to be a, a, a stout contender. All right, then I'll, I'll go with that. I'll go with that. But you ain't got any fines? No fines. That's my problem. If I had some fines, I'd, I'd be with you there. On the I don't care. I reckon this is good. OK. <laughs> Clearly, Berwick, our building's expert, will need to adjudicate on this. Stuart to John Gator. Go ahead, Stuart. John, they've cleared all that stuff out in the orchard now, so it's ready to do this if you are. OK, Stuart, we'll head over and start pegging out. So, we think we know where the Jacobean mansion was. It's wonderful, isn't it? Yeah, here. <laughs> well, under here somewhere, anyway. Yeah. Then, at the end of the house, there would have been this courtyard, mm -hmm. uh, which Beric says would have been quite demure, not full of little squalid <laughs> houses. And beyond it, a coach house, and that's the remnants of the coach house. Right. What sort of family lived in this? And built it, of course. A family called Ewer, E-U-R-E. -E. They were very wealthy and powerful in the northeast of England, and in fact they'd owned a third of Malton Manor from oh, several centuries. There was one snag. They were a bit out of step with their own times. Uh, they were what we call recusants. What's that mean? 
Um, well, after the Reformation, if you carried on being a Roman Catholic, you, you really represented something of a threat to the new Church of England and, and indeed to the state. So did that mean that, th that they were all incredibly persecuted or is that just a myth? Well, most of them were just fined. Some of them, if they were as wealthy as the Ewers, pretty heavily. But uh, subsequently, in the 1620s and 30s, uh, they did represent a threat to the establishment and the sheriff was ordered uh, to seize the house and make sure that uh, all the armour and armaments in it uh, were, were taken. So it was actually attacked? <laughs> There's a lovely document where, where Lord Ewer tells them to go and stuff themselves, basically. He has told the sheriff he will hold possession until Christmas Day, do what they can if a thousand men were there and that if the sheriff shoot down any part of the house, he will set fire to the rest to his own damage and danger of his neighbours. Uh, well, the sheriff's not going to take that lying down. And finally, the sheriff brings up 50 men and a great piece of ordnance, a huge gun, and, and batters the place into submission. Comes in at night and takes possession. It's amazing. So it was a, it was a private house. That's right. And, <laughs> <laughs> and, and the, the cops come with... Big guns. You can and bash poor it down. old lady, you know, with cannonballs whistling through <laughs> the windows, <laughs> saying, "Crumbs, what have we done to deserve this sort of treatment?" Bizarre. Robin and I think we know where the mansion is. So do Norris and Berwick, and now Geophys have got their results. So do they, and we all want a trench. But someone's got to decide exactly where to put it. Now, are you sure you want the trench over in that location there, rather than actually further back here? It, it, it's almost six and two threes, I feel, at this point in time. Um, yeah. if, we go to, if we go this way, we might also lose the house and get too right. close to the terrace. If we go too far that way, we might also... If it's a very small house, I mean, there's, there's a horrible thought goes through my head that you know, it's, in, it's in between yeah. and the trench okay. won't hit it. But we've, got to, we've just got to find out what's yeah. there, really. So we've agreed on the location at, at that end there. Yeah. And you're going to go with that, are I'll you? I'll go with that. OK, then. Yeah. Well, I hope Very you're right the there, because uh, your career's on this one. No, I'll do <laughs> It's make or break time. With the castle by no means tied down, and only one more trench allowed after this, Trench 4 just has to hit the mansion. But that's a definite change in soil there. That line is actually standing at the moment, isn't it? Yeah. That, and anything, anything that's on that alignment, that's, yeah, what, that's, that's what, what we're, we're looking, looking for. for. But time's marching on. And with that little hint that the trench might be in the right place, they call it a day. The true test will come tomorrow. If I get this wrong, it's not. <laughs> Well, you better not. I've been relying on you. <laughs> it's just about there now. You want to go, go for it? it? Go for it. You're ready right. when you are. Here we go. I better get out your way, I reckon. Oh, my God, that's impressive. That is amazing. Oh, wow. <laughs> And what do you call that? Quenching. That's the quench. That makes or breaks a blade. That's the most vital part in making a sword. So, well, what do we do now? Now we grind the blade and yeah. polish it. Right. And once that's done, we fit a hand guard across here. Right. We fit a handle there, and we fit a pommel on the back to make the whole thing balance out. Is there any chance we can do some grinding? Yeah, by all means. What? On we go. But it wasn't long before they too succumbed to the lure of a drink and headed back to the lodge. No, in there. No, don't run, don't run. Here is a man, is the man who's been fast asleep for two hours resting his leg. Oh. <laughs> what's been happening, Stuart? What's, uh, what's been going on in your trench? Well, we've been, uh, we've put a trench in to see if we could find the Jacobean mansion. Uh, we, yeah. we opened it not too long ago and it's looking quite promising at the moment. Carenza? Well, after a certain amount of humming and hawing, we did eventually manage to get the digger through the trees to the <laughs> bank. <laughs> and it looks as if the bank 
that's there is turning up a rubble wall, which may be the remains of the Norman wall underneath it, but we need to do Great, a bit more. so that's over by... Yeah, that's over on the west side that we're talking about, Great. so that's looking really good. What about you, Beric? Well, I've been looking in the old Trench 1, which we've extended, yeah. which we've yeah. continued to work in this direction, and that's brought up a medieval building, a freestanding medieval cool. building within the area of the castle. Fantastic, that's great, that's great. It's obviously all happens when I'm not here. <laughs> we'll stay away more often, isn't it? <laughs> End of day two. Looks like we've definitely got our Jacobean mansion. We've certainly got something medieval, but what did they both look like? Let's hope we can find out tomorrow. Cheers. 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 Nine a.m. on the final day, and geophysics are castle hunting in a new area. The trouble is, it's really close to where the fort entrance is. Yeah, but the, but the, this is what you thought was the. I think that's the, the, the ditch. Is. The ditch of the of the fort. Yeah. What haven't we got in this? <laughs> <laughs> it's certainly we, we need Stuart too. Yeah, yeah. but the, the thing is, that this is really different, isn't it? We haven't got anything like that elsewhere. Okay. That's a gamble, isn't it? It's either a medieval castle or a Roman building. Stuart has other things on his mind, in particular the Jacobean mansion. He's got no finds yet, and although he thinks the pale area is a floor, there's no guarantee it's part of the house. Meanwhile, Mix on the prowl again, over at Trench 3, where Carenza thinks she's found some of the castle. You can see at this end of the trench, we've got this light uh, bank there. It's a bit yeah. difficult to see here. If you faintly detach from it to when you're in well, here. Well, you are detached from it, but I can't get out there. Yeah, yeah. Well, the, there's this light spread here. This is a whole load of building stone with an awful right. lot of mortar in it. Yeah. So it's obviously a collapsed wall. Yeah. Um, we haven't actually found any of the, the, front, the front or back face of the wall, but it's just the collapsed um, material from it. Uh, if Nick could go down a bit further, Go down the trench a bit, a bit Nick, better. if you would. There's no foundations to that. Right. Um, okay, good. That's it, right. Now, if you Thanks can just sort of much. pan up the trench as so it were. Look up the trench. So what's obviously happened, they've built the wall, they've scraped down onto a fairly solid surface, which is this orangey stuff, and yeah. then built the wall up from that with really no foundations. But, but it's very similar to what we've got in the other right, trench the wall over there. Right, the all robbed out, is it, in It fact? is, yeah, and there's just this rubble and mortar right. left. It's the, the, what the, the, sort of dated stuff have we got from this? We've had medieval stuff. We had a bit of medieval floor tile. Right. Some iron nails come out of that little bit of glass. So we're, we're a few bits of pottery. Something medieval rather than earlier or. Yes, or I think 12th, 13th yeah. century. Right. Can we go to the wall and look over? Because I can't get there. I'd like to see whether we've got any sort of view over the town at all. That's great. Uh, it is, as I suspected, really quite a looking drop out, when you're looking yes, right out, out over to the which town. is what we were saying yesterday with the, um, with the plan and everything, wasn't it? So we've yeah. got the perimeter of the castle, as you say, overlooking yeah. the town on the high and ground. And we can see that it is high ground because we're at roof oh, yes, level yes. Looking, looking over the wall. John and Chris eventually dragged Stuart away from the mansion to look at their mysterious new printout. Yeah. This is a room fort here. That's, that's your section of ditch coming through there, isn't it? This is the avenue of trees. Yeah. Uh, and that's the high resistance response we're getting right. from the bank. Yeah. Um, but this clear strong, building, it's yeah. it just inside the fort ditches. One of but the thoughts I've had since we started is that the early medieval castle builders may have chopped off one corner like that, yeah. so you can use the existing defences and then put a, a castle or a castle mound inside there. And that could be the first castle on the site, so getting something there could well fit in with that theory. The area they're talking about is right on the edge of where we're allowed to dig, immediately below the Jacobean house in what would have been its garden. The blue car there is the Team Four Wheel Drive, and it's just brought Mick to the scene of what Stuart and Geophysics hope will be Trench Five. Ah! Right, Mick. There's the results. We've now extended the survey. John Etty's oh, come along to keep an eye on things. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. We're convinced that must be some sort of building. The problem is we just don't know the date. 
I'm not convinced um, though that this is likely to be the location for the castle wall, to no. be honest. Not not on not on the evidence that we've got so far. I Why think, is that? I think it's just as likely to be Roman. We don't know how far the castle went this way. Mm -hmm. And uh, but You look I, a bit worried about whether or not we should be digging this trench. I, I thought we'd got five that we could do. Well, that's true, but uh, it really depends on, on, on the results that, that come up each time. Five was the maximum. Yeah. The thing is, all the presumptions are in favour of the physical preservation yeah. of ancient monuments, not the preservation by record. That's considered second best, really, because techniques do advance through time. Um, the geophysics people have actually shown that. But really, some years ago, we didn't have all that new technology at hand. And as a result, if we dig too much now, there'll be less for the future and for future mm. generations. Mm. I understand what you're saying, but that's why we need to proceed with caution on these nationally important sites. Proceeding with caution is John Etty's job. <laughs> but I think deep down, he wanted to trench as much as we did. So what precisely are you proposing that we do? Well, I, I, I would propose that we did put a, a small area in over that to test it. I mean, we could work out the sort of area we've got left to, in relation to the time, but mm -hmm. another five by two or something like that. As small as that, you think? Well, if, we're, if we want to know what the character of those that geophysics is, mm. You Sounds to me as though John's prepared to give us a bit more than that, Mick. Oh, well. <laughs> Perhaps I've said too much. I think the main thing is... Perhaps I was being more cautious than he is in the end. No. <laughs> You're such a radical in every other area. And really? Yet as, soon as, as soon as it comes to scheduling, it seems to me that you're really, no, no. You're really sort of doffing a cap no, no. all the time. What, 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 what concerns me more about this is, is the time to do the work and the recording in the time left. It's not leaving a mess behind us that concerns me. Mm -hmm. Right, gentlemen, it is quarter to eleven... Day three. Coffee time, in fact. <laughs> no, no way is it coffee time. This argument, which I must admit I've, I've been instrumental in uh, extending, has meant that we really don't have very much time. We've got if to get on. If we're going to do this trench do it, properly. We've got to push on. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got a shot at finding Stuart's castle, but only on condition John Etty can stop the trench whenever he wants to. He's been very supportive so far, letting us dig fairly deep, but it's been worth it. Trench 1, if you remember, was where Phil and Mick the Dig found a wall yesterday. Berwick has since confirmed it's part of a building inside the castle. Trench 2 has been taken deeper and revealed this, which Berwick is very excited about. I know you've got that, We've gone through all the 16th century dump layers and the, and the demolition. We went into what it must be medieval and we seem to have quite a big wide wall through That's here. And I would guess that it's going to run off down here and turn to meet the equally large wall that robbed out in the first trench. So we have got a big medieval building standing here. Both trenches have produced a vast array of finds from Roman through medieval to Jacobean, and they all need to be cleaned up. I've had a couple of other ones of these, what are they? Are they cups or something? Vases maybe? I think it's part of a, um, a vase. We have had some other pieces very yeah. similar. They've got a Queen nice Queen pattern on, haven't they? Back in the incident room, Sue and Berwick have started to reconstruct the medieval aquamanil found on the first day. And look, its front leg sits on the top of the oh, leg. Oh, yes, it does. And the back legs dangle down. We've got one on the other side. And so its feet would rest and on the shoulder of the jug. Oh, I think that's rather right? cute. Oh, well, maybe. I think it's all a bit tasty. <laughs> <laughs> It would have been about six or eight inches high, and, tasteless or not, would have adorned only the very smartest of medieval dining tables. Perhaps Richard the Lionheart or King John, both of whom visited Malton Castle, drank from it. OK, Stuart, what have you got? Ah, uh, well, I think you'll like what we've got, in fact. I'll show the finds first. What we've got from here at the moment is a piece of window lead. Ah. Some window glass. Fantastic. We've got ceramic tile and roof tile. Yep. And we've got this little beauty, which looks like a stone mullion. Exactly the style and period you expect from a Jacobean house. That is fantastic. So that, with the window lead and the glass, that's destruction, isn't it? Absolutely. Do you know what a mullion is, I'm clear what a stone mullion it, it's is. The, it's, no. the win it's a stone window frame. Right. It's typical of the period of a Jacobean house that we'd be looking for. And to add to that, Mick's just been showing me, they look as if they get the plaster floor. 
from the range of the building below that destruction layer. So, it, I mean, to me, it looks pretty conclusive that we, we've got the range of the Jacobean mansion here. Oh, that's wonderful. And it's all in your garden, Norris. It's all come together. <laughs> it's all come together as well. And we're probably standing right in, in the, the middle courtyard. Yeah, right in the middle. We're in the courtyard yeah. here. Yeah. It's absolutely yeah. super. I'm thrilled about this. Yeah. <laughs> wonderful. Steve has now got enough information to reconstruct the mansion. The lodge was the original gatehouse through which you'd pass to be confronted by a magnificent two-storey mansion built in 1604. The house and its magnificent gardens would have dominated the area. But the splendour was short-lived. The mansion met its end just 70 years after it had first been built. Lord Ewer dies, mm -hmm. and uh, the place is inherited by two sisters, cousins, and they can't agree. In 1675, <laughs> they cannot agree as to how to split this house I up. See. And the litigation has gone on for some 20 years, and eventually the high sheriff steps in. Mm -hmm. He says, obviously, enough is enough, and he orders the whole place to be demolished and effectively gives one stone to one sister, the next stone to the next second sister. Two piles of rubble Gosh. are divided between them. It sounds them. like a divorce almost, doesn't well, it? Well, it is, it's <laughs> yeah. kind of judgment of Solomon, yeah, yeah. only in this case, the baby was very definitely <laughs> split through the middle. So while Mrs. Binner struggles to keep at least one part of her garden intact, the archeology is falling nicely into place. We've got the mansion sorted out, the shape of the medieval castle is becoming clearer and Trench 5 is well underway. It's one of these, if it's going to go, it's going to go down. And it, yeah. Who knows where it's going to go down? Yeah. 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 I can, take it back can you move on yeah. back then, Ken? I mean, it'd be useful just to simply verify the edge that we've got, yeah. just to see if, it, if, if that's real. Just to prove whether we're right. Well, that's it. <laughs> Mick, like the rest of us, waits on tenterhooks to discover whether it's Roman or medieval. Right, this is just a very rough And Beric's hard at work with Steve. Well, that's the wall that we saw in people's gardens by coming in from the road with Carenza the other yeah. day. And that's a narrow buttress and a little hole in the wall which are there. And so I've used that to project and de devise a building. The castle we found was probably the second one on the site, rebuilt in the mid 12th century after the previous one was destroyed in Stephen's reign. Steve and Berwick have had to make a number of guesses. But Carenza's wall in Trench 3, together with the walls she and Berwick found on day one, give the perimeter. The buttress in those walls suggests a building here. And the walls in Trenches 1 and 2 suggest another large building here. The castle was built in stone with a commanding view over Malton Town and the River Derwent. All we need now is the first castle from Trench 5. John? Hello. I've just heard we can't dig this trench anymore. That's right. What's yes. the problem? Well, I think so far, actually, um, we've already answered some of the questions about the geophysics. It looks to me as if just about everything here is later. We're talking garden archaeology here. And in mm. fact, if you look down here, you've got... Uh, Can I come on here? Yeah, yeah. You've got a good example of that. We've got a, a piece of a pot from a, a garden plant. It's a flower pot. That's right. We found a flower pot. And how old is our flower pot? Well, I think the flower pot could be quite a few hundred years old. You see, it's very roughly made, and it's the sort of thing you'd find in these sorts of gardens here. But it's not very interesting, is it? I mean, just, why don't we just take this layer off and get down to the archaeology? Well, in fact, it is. I mean, really, what we've actually got here is part of the formal gardens of the Jacobean mansion. Well, everywhere's a garden, John. Every, every, every built-up site, there's going to be a garden there. Ah, but this was associated with that very important site, and it's actually worth protecting in its own right. I can't see any evidence for the castle being in this location. It's, it's just, it might be here, but I don't think we're going to find out on this exercise. So we're stuck, that's it? I'm afraid so. That's the five trenches. How frustrating. Stuart's castle has slipped through our fingers because of a garden. But I suppose I shouldn't complain. We've found what we came for and the gardens are really a bonus. 
And one of the ideas for this site that we've got here, because you've discovered that it used to be a formal garden, right. what we'd love to do now is to actually recreate that formal garden here, where it was, using the same sort of flowers, hedges, everything that there was there. That would be wonderful. That would, it'd be great. John was saying that there is a, a formal garden like this in Chipping Camden, I think, that was actually laid out in the shape of a Union Jack. Mm. You don't reckon that? No, I don't think so. I don't think the people around here would appreciate a Union Jack, perhaps a Yorkshire Rose or something like well, that. Well, only if there was um, one in the uh, original absolutely, one. Absolutely, absolutely. Stick yeah. it in. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Barry, how are you doing? Hello, Phil. Wow. Good Lord, is that the same? That's the same one. Good God. The grinding's finished, the polishing's done, that's now a finished sword blade. Uh, how long have you been doing this? Oh, all morning, about four or five hours. <laughs> what a beautiful thing. Feel proud of it? Oh, uh, I will when we get it fully assembled. Of course, yeah, we've got to finish it off. We've got to finish it off. Is that finished, it? That's a finished song. <laughs> John, this is incredibly heavy. Can you uh, get my helmet on? Sure, no problems there. How did people fight with that weight on them? practice. From the age of 10 years old they'd have been trained to wear this kind of equipment and despite the fact this weighs sort of 60 to 80 pounds or sort of four or five stone, once it's actually on you the weight's evenly distributed, it's actually very mobile. And is this authentic? Absolutely correct to the period. You've got the mittens, the long sleeves, the very long mail underneath your surcoat here. But uh, yeah, once you're actually used to wearing it, you can run around, jump, ride a horse, use a sword. And you've got a shield and a lance, which you should be carrying as well. So you'd have even more weight on you than you have now. You are the equivalent of a medieval tank. <laughs> I've certainly works up an appetite. The weight on your neck is enormous, isn't it? Do you uh, fancy a bit of pig roast? Yep, definitely. Come on. Come on. Come in, lads. Pig roast time. Come on. As a reward for our hard work and their hospitality, we invited the residents of Malton to join us in a feast. <laughs> and there was good reason to celebrate. By this time tomorrow, all the archaeology is going to be covered up again, and it certainly won't be seen in our lifetime, but we've had a chance to have a glimpse of the Jacobean mansion and a Roman fort and a medieval castle. Not bad for a weekend.